might seem a bit hard at first, but I assure you it's really not. Um, it's just basic, anyone can do it kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so there's three steps. One is apply torque, and torque is done through the use of a tool called the tension wrench. And it looks like this. It's just a little bent piece of metal. And the way it works is that I'll just use, this is some, uh, it's called CCL. It's crappy lock, but you just take it and you place it into the lock like that. And what it'll work to is it'll, you'll be able to turn the lock when those pin pairs are raised. Pain in the ass. Um, okay, so next step is you're going to take a pick and you're going to find binding pins. And we'll go over binding pins in a second. And then you're going to raise all those pin pairs the way a key would normally do. Uh, and then the lock will turn and it'll open. So. Okay, so real quick. How many of you have locks that look like this? Any one of them. Or, where's my favorite? It's so small I have trouble finding it. It's about the size of a dime, but it's a massive. Here it is. So, um, don't quote me on this, but the prices for these obviously go up as they get bigger. Because um, it's generally seen for locks that you see that bigger is better because it's stronger. It's true versus physical uh, force, but this talk's only going to cover non-destructive ways of opening locks. And we'll put him in too. So we have all these types of locks, and I think this one at the end retails for at least $25. They're pretty expensive. Um, and so you would assume that for $25 of your money that this lock would be, would be you know, worth it. Um, what's really funny is that most of the master locks have this sticker that says tough under fire, which is really good. Buildings burning down, your first thing is to hope that all the padlocks stay together. <laughs> um, despite the fact that the door might burn down. Question. Oh, for shooting the lock. I don't know. Oh, wow. Why don't they just shoot the door? Okay. Oh. I totally ruined that. Okay, so uh, based on these five locks, which one do you think is the most secure? This one? Okay. So how many people think that this tiny one will work the best? Show of hands. Well, yes. There you go. There you go. Okay. How many of you think the big one will... will uh, be the best? Ooh, they see the bait. Or do they? <laughs> okay. So we're going to, I'm not going to pick the little one because I actually don't have anything small enough, which may make it the most secure lock. <laughs> um, but we'll go for this one. So first we're going to take it, insert our torque wrench, and apply, um, big, beginner mistakes is to apply too much torque. It's, it's really a feather touch, like you could just rest your finger on it and it'll almost be enough. Um, then you take your pick. In this case I'm using a C rake. It looks like a little snake. And then I'll just go. Of course I suck at this. Let's try again. Of course I really suck at this today. There. Silence. <laughs> Ah, the guilt applause. So we'll go, we'll go to this next one. Pity applause. I'm a big fan of this pick, but there you go. Another one. Oh, this is, okay. So these are actually the same lock, despite this one says commercial and costs more. Um, if you look at the bottoms of them, they'll say the number right here. It'll say number three and number five. Um, and that'll pretty much say, like, the higher the number, the quote-unquote, the better the lock is. Uh, but these are the same, so just keep that for lock purchases. And then we have him. Um, no promises on if I can open this quickly, but it's generally not that much harder, to be quite honest. Um, hopefully I'll... Actually, I'm going to use a different pick, because I promised myself I'd try and branch out to different picks. Uh, 
Well, well, we'll try a couple different ones just so you guys get familiar with picks. A lot of people don't know what the difference between picks is. Uh, essentially nothing. Essentially what you're most comfortable with is what you should use. But at the same time, different picks have different uses um, functional, functionality wise. Um, for example, this pick is just called the small hook and it's used for just raising single pins. Uh, the, the pick I'm going to use right now is called the L rake. Okay. Looks like that with lots of little teeth and it's very long. Uh, I don't really know what the L rake is versus other pins except touch all the pins at once. But I did not. What's that? Technically, you should use the broken key extractor. If you, which is this. You shouldn't pick with this very pointy one. Looks like that. Hard to see. And yeah, don't pick with that. I've had friends who get those stuck in locks because they think they're picks, but they're not. Of course, I fail at life today, so I'm going to have trouble picking all these, of course. Wait, give it time. <laughs> Can I? Maybe I'm just playing with you. Is that right? Well, I'll, I'll pick it while I'm going through, and then hopefully it will work. So anyways, uh, so that's how it looks when you're setting the pin. You're applying the torque first, as you see in the end, and then you're raising that pin pair. And once that blue pin goes over that line, it'll get caught under, and that the plug will rotate, and it'll keep that up there unless you release tension with the tension bar. Um, so once you set that first pin, then you move on to a next pin, uh, and then the next, and then the next, until you have them all up at the shear line and th the lock opens. Uh, so I said find the binding pin and that might not, might not be straightforward and the reason picking works um, at all is because of defects in manufacturing that we can't, oh wait, 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 there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I secretly <laughs> snuck the key out. Okay, so the way um, picks are, are able to work is because all of these chambers are either not correctly or the pins aren't exactly the same. One might be a little wider than another. Um, and so the way it works is that they all kind of look like that at a very small level. And when the, let's do this. When, the, when this piece is rotated, uh, it'll cause that one that's leftmost or rightmost, depending on how you're rotating, to hit it first, and you'll be able to push that one over, um, and it'll jump over the shear line. And I'm just going to try and go around all the locks on this table by the end of the talk. No promises, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find that binding pin, and if you see on the right, there's that one pin that is actually giving play. And by giving play, um, when you're raising all these pins with the picks, you'll feel one that has a bit of extra tension on it, and that one will generally be the binding pin. Uh, and you want to push that up. There, there's another one. <laughs> I know, it's, it's up now. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find that binding pin, and you want to, um, of course, push that up over the shear line. When that first binding pin binds, the plug will rotate causing another pin to bind, and so on and so on, until all the pins have bind once you push them over the shear line. Uh, and generally, it is that easy. It sounds kind of hard, but once you, once you get a set of tools, or however you want to go about it, uh, make a set of tools, um, it's very, very simple to do. Um, and actually, okay, so here's essentially what I was doing. Uh, but I was using a rake, so I wasn't exactly going one by one. You see how that pin had a bit more added force when he tried to push it up. It's because he noticed it was the binding pin. And again, here. And it, in the example, it's very simplified. But for some locks, like these master locks, that does work. And there's another one. <laughs> so. <laughs> and that was actually a lock that I just opened, or the same type of lock that I just opened, complete with tough under fire sticker. Um, so uh, Home Depot sells this, and you can't see the price tag, but that's $18. Oh. 
I, it might come with two of them, but it's still $18 for a lock that could be opened in under 10 seconds. Um, so I thought that was pretty funny that that's labeled as high security because it has zero high security features. Um, certain locks such as this lock, this lock, this lock. These all have most of these security features, and that's what makes them good locks. Um, it, you can't just go in and push all the pin pairs up and get lucky. They're very well engineered, and they offer most of these different features um, to deter you from picking or any other type of, of manipulation with picks or, or other kinds of methods like but key bumping, uh, which we'll get into later. So the first is restrictive keyways, and the keyway is the part of the lock that that you see right here, the, the actual hole that the, the key fits into, and that A restricts, uh, god damn it, I gotta, not used to this Windows crap. <laughs> I keep wanting to do like Alt F2 and stuff, so. Um, so restrictive keyways. So there's an example of one. And if you know your Star Wars, which I actually had to look up because I don't know my Star Wars, that's the Sarlacc pit. And it bears a striking resemblance to that keyway because that keyway is insanely hard to move around in. You have very little room to move your pick, and it makes it very hard to pick. It also restricts, um, well, Best is notorious for having lots and lots of different keyways, um, all of which are generally designed to, to eliminate manipulation. So, any questions? Dead air. Okay. The best? Uh, you buy probably 200 for under five bucks. Um, I, I'm just guessing, but most other blanks are generally cheap if they if they're um, non-patented blanks. Uh, so the next feature will be security pins. In the in the other examples, the pins were just both uh, rect well, uh, sphere cylindrical. I didn't do too good in geometry. A lot of sleeping went on. <laughs> um, and the way they work is that they don't just push straight up and give. Um, in this example, the person's putting too much tension on it, so he's moving the lock too far, and it'll get caught like that. And most of the security pins function in essentially the same way. Here's a, a spool pin. That functions in the same way. And there's also the serrated, which has many, many different types of, many devices it can catch. Um, and if you remember our first example, the bottom pins, and I assume as well as the top pins, I haven't taken this lock apart, but the bottom pins are serrated, as you can see right there. I hope that comes up on the big screen. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Uh, the next feature is side pins, and I actually have this lock. This is the, the Slage Everest, and uh, at one point it was considered a pretty good lock, uh, but we'll go over why it's not. And the side pin is essentially, it has all the normal features of the locks we've gone through before, actually security pins as well, but it has this little pin right here sitting in the back of the lock, and the key looks like that. It has this little lip right here, and that raises that side pin to the right height. The problem with the Everest is that the side pin is the same in every Everest. Um, this Everest here is the same as whatever was used in the picture, so that the side pin for this on this key, the setting, would work for that. You just need the key uh, depths cut to the right places. So what people <laughs> figured out, pretty funny, is that, well, if all the sidebars are the same, then, uh, well, oh, sorry, this is how it looks when it opens it. It pushes that up into the right spot. So anyways, People figured out, well, let's do that. <laughs> we do that, and this also doubles as a torque wrench. So, so, <laughs> so not only are we defeating the side pin, but we have a nice handy little torque wrench to use. Um, so, And then it, it essentially after this, it becomes a standard slage cylinder because the rest of the, pin, the side pin wouldn't matter, and there's no difference between an Everest and a standard slage doorknob besides the side pin. Next feature is sidebars. The sidebars are actually really cool, and what make many of these different locks uh, impervious to a lot of things. Not completely invulnerable, but pretty good. Give me a second. What is the key? By the way, you know you have a problem when all the keys can't fit into this box. Oh, <laughs> speaking of blanks, I got a key ring of blanks that I don't even have locks to go to, so they're, they're really not hard to obtain. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah, try them all. Okay, I quit, but... Uh, I need a Vanna up here. Good. Okay. Okay, okay so anyways... Um, oh, boy. Find the key for that. You know what it looks like. Okay, so this uh, this is an Asa V10, and what it is is the sidebar is essentially a series of other pins over to the side here, uh, and the lock is cut in a special way. It's like essentially it's a lot of side pins, and when all the side the side pins are raised to the right height, this little piece right here will slip out and it'll allow the the plug to turn. Um, what's good about the sidebar is that many different keys can have different sidebars sidebars, so you can't do something. Um, well, in general, you can't do something like they did with the Everest, where you just file it in half and you have a working sidebar key. But this specific OSA V10, um, they didn't think it out very well. They decided, for a given region, the San Diego area, we'll give, we'll just ship all the keys with the same sidebar because that'll make it real easy on locksmiths. They could just have a stock of these sidebars and cut it. Problem is, is that that produces that Everest problem again, and it also becomes a big problem when we get into bumping, uh, which you'll see later. But otherwise, secure sidebar implementations um, such as the Medico, which this Medico, which will, is actually the next slide, okay, um, work much better. And also note that this OSA has a lot of other security features like this custom pin right here as well as those two little places to catch it. So it's, it's considered a very hard to pick lock. Um, but not, not so hard to bump because of the sidebar problem. And I have it here, uh, and actually I have pictures. So you see right here is a picture of the little sidebar pins. I don't know if that's visible, but hopefully. And then here is a picture of the key. It has that set of cuts that touch the sidebar pins and raise them to the right places. That. Okay. <laughs> that's what I thought. It's, it's too late now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Quit. Uh, okay, so this Medico, which I just showed you, has quite a few... <laughs> it's in the fucking lock, is where the key is. <laughs> I, I give up, I give up. Okay, so axial rotation, it's a sidebar, but the sidebar is manipulated in a different way. Instead of having that, those side cuts to raise the pins to the right height, they said, hey, why don't we use our existing pins and modify them? And when these existing pins are rotated to the right position, they'll engage the sidebar, and the sidebar will fall into them. And on the picture, you can see these, these little dimples in the keys. And you'll also see that the keys are cut, slanted on the bottom. And that's so that they fit on to this key in the right way so that they are rotated properly. And it's a really ingenious design, um, just because that makes it so much harder to pick and so much harder to bump, because you can't bump with an angled key. Um, the physics of it don't work and it's very hard but not impossible to pick this because of having to rotate those pins to the right place as well as raise them to the right height. Um, so it's a very, very secure lock um, by all of today's standards, which is probably what somebody said about this 50, 60 years ago. So all of these locks that we've seen so far have been pin tumblers because they're based around pin stacks uh, and they tumble. Um, but there's other types of lock. There's warded, tubular, and dimple. And tubular and dimple are essentially the same pin tumbler technology, uh, but they, they modify it in such a way that makes them more or less secure depending on the lock. So warded locks, I'm sure a lot of you have seen these. Um, they're really popular in outdoor areas. Keys look like in the picture. They're not pin tumbler keys because they're not pin tumbler locks. And instead of operating on pin stacks, they operated on latches and springs. And there's only one latch that you have to pop, and the shackle will release itself. And the other latches just serve so that when you put the wrong key in, they'll, they'll hit against it, and it won't be able to turn properly. Um, and warded locks, they don't require it, but uh, they sell warded picks, which are much, they're hand-tailored to warded locks. Um, again, you buy them, or you can make them yourself. And warded locks are made um, because they're much more rugged than, uh, than pin tumbler locks because all they have is that latch and all that latch needs to do is pop up. Um, and it's good in outdoor areas where there's a lot of dirt and um, you know, natural problems, uh, whereas a pin tumbler would just clog up and not be able to rotate and you know, put all those springs in the right position and all that sort of stuff. And so that's what it looks like on the inside. And all you need to do is pop that latch out of the way for that um, bolt 
the shackle to pop up. And so here's a picture, and that's what the keyway looks like. And inside you could see right here these false wards, which will prevent the wrong key from turning. And mo the old school lock looks like that, and that's a warded. Tech that's warded. Um, all of those that look like that, for the most part, are probably warded. You know, the big dungeon kind of key that's warded. Uh, and there's an example of warded picks, and you can see they're a lot different than pin number picks, as they're a lot shorter, and the designs are much different. So, see, whereas pin number picks are very long and slender, those are very short and very. My opinion, God damn it. I don't see why they have the other window open if I'm doing the slideshow. <laughs> Anyhow. So tubular locks. You'll see these mostly on vending machines, on other stuff. We actually have a tubular padlock, um, which is kind of neat. Um, not unheard of, but just uncommon for people to go in and buy a tubular padlock. No, I don't need it. Um, and they're essentially pin tumblers, and they're arranged in circular stacks of four, seven, or eight. Uh, there's varying other ones, but seven and eight are generally the most common you'll find. And they have tub a tubular pick. And you could also use ballpoint pen casing on really crappy tubular locks, which is interesting because uh, the kryptonite in the picture, um, Mark Tobias, a real good lock guy who gave a talk at DEF CON about bumping, um, he figured out that you could put a, bi a big pen and open up the lock in seconds, which kryptonite wasn't very happy about. But <laughs> it did... Um, they didn't, you know, say bullshit. They, well, they might have said bullshit, but they uh, essentially switched to a disc-based lock, and their locks are much better for it, um, in my opinion. And again, commonly found on vending machines, bicycle locks. That's a tubular pick, and it's very interesting, um, the design of this. And actually, Strom is here to pick this lock because I fail at tubular picks. <laughs> um, but it's just these little levers and the way they work is that you put them in the tubular lock and now they're all arranged with those stacks of pins and then you go and you could s oh my you slide these I don't want to loosen it you could slide these levers up and down so that you can manipulate the, the pin stacks in there and uh, oh I thought I had it that time um and Strom's going to pick this because yeah, he can and I fail. On the camera or? No, nah, just do it. Okay. You guys just watch here. First. I'm just going to go on. You, you okay. alert, alert me. Right. You'll, 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 you'll hear it when it's done. I won't need to Hold up a red light. <laughs> so our next type of lock is a dimple lock. And again, it's the same. It's essentially a pin tumbler, but it's arranged differently, uh, which makes it, uh, quote unquote, harder to pick. And the keyway is horizontal, which is the main difference. Um, so whereas you were going like this into a, into a lock and you were able to pick up and down, now you have this limited space um, vertically to pick. But you have lots of horizontal room, but that doesn't really make a difference. Um, dimple picks, of course, for picking dimple locks, much smaller than these type of picks, and I have a picture of it. Um, and you could also bump dimple locks. I think you could bump tubular locks, but I don't know if anybody's tried because it requires the use of a tubular key cutter, which most most people don't have access to. Um, and dimple locks are essentially considered to be more high security. Um, they're used in a lot of door locks uh, for cars. Um, the bar thing that you put across your steering wheel sometimes uses the dimple locks. Um, they're considered a, a better pin tumbler for the most part, when in fact m they may or may not be depending on their exact features. And the queso in the picture is actually a good lock um, with features that I, I don't want to get into because it's, it's too time consuming. And so that's what they look like. Um, so fundamentally, the same as far as opening and unlocking the lock, but um, arranged differently. And here's a picture of a cobble lock, which is actually another really good dimple lock. And you can see it's not one, but they have three. There you go. So. Did you fuck it up? Huh? Well, I, I can if I want to. No, don't fuck it up. Well, it's uh, prob probably best to show no, no, how don't. you can fuck it up. Well, the problem with the, the tubular locks is if you open it, now you've moved those top pins, but the, and if you move it too far, they'll fall into the wrong holes. Well, here it's set. I can reset it show the show the camera. Oh, you did it. Good one. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you guys can see that. No. Whoa, 
I probably need to get it there. there. So you see how, wow, this is hard. So right here is where this thing should be, but the, the other side is over here. So now I can't put that key in because it needs to engage both those little pieces. See it on the picture here. See, I can't fit the key in at all. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to put tubular locks, you need to be careful to only open it so far as that it'll pop the lock open. And once you do that, you want to you want to let go so that you don't put it far enough, too far yeah. and do that. Or and just make sure to twist it back to where you found it first. Yeah. Oh, and wait, one other thing is that the tubular pick, once you pick it, you tighten this and you have a copy of the key essentially. Yeah, so, is it set? Yeah, it's set. You sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, open. So. <laughs> you fuck fuck my this shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can fix it. I don't really care about your lock, Strom. Okay, so um, the dimple lock is a Kaaba, and it's essentially a dimple lock with three sets of, well, three, I don't know how to explain it. They're arranged in a and it's three pin chamber rows. Uh, very hard to pick, because you can see it's very convoluted, hard to move around in that. I think it has uh, 13 pins total possible, but they also leave pins open so that it suffers from the same problem as the tubular lock, that if you pick it or bump it and you turn it, it fucks up the lock, and it won't open or unopen. And they're dimple picks. And you see they're very small. Um, I haven't used them, but I hear they're very effective at what they do against most dimple locks. So, okay. Now the fun part begins. That was all boring bullshit, but uh, introduction to lock bumping. How many people know what bumping is? Most people who know me. Cool. <laughs> Um, we're going to get into how bumping works, uh, what pick guns are, how to make bump keys, uh, improvements in bumping, defending against bumping, checking for bumping. Um, for those who don't know, bumping is a very, very easy way to open locks, better than picking for some locks, actually, um, as is the case with the very hard to pick OSA lock. Um, you could open locks with a single swing of a hammer and the right cut key in under five seconds. One swing will do it. Um, it's very efficient, very easy, very clean. Um, it's v pretty much the biggest security problem as far as physical security in my lifetime. And I'm not that old, um, but as far as, locks, <laughs> as far as locks are concerned, um, it's probably the biggest thing to hit the lock community. And it's been known for a long time, uh, but much with the safe community, whenever there was a problem, it'd be on the hush-hush. So, you know, don't tell anybody who's not a locksmith. Uh, but even now, there are plenty of locksmiths who don't know. Um, who will make free copies of bump keys for you. We, we, me and Strom actually one yeah. day went to Home Depot and they copy keys. They're like, oh, sure. Yeah, here's one I made at Osh. <laughs> so $1.25 and you can ruin every lock that you could find with that keyway. Um, so yes. So again, general response to bumping is this weird gentleman up in the front pointed out at the beginning. It, it's, it's pretty much bullshit. Um, hard to do. Only professionals can do it. You need a lot of money, a lot of time. You need every key on the market for 100% efficiency. That's actually true, but stupid. Um, keys must be made extremely exact. Um, I'm going to discuss with some other stuff later on, and keys are hard to obtain. My ring of keys that I don't even know what locks they go to, um, not hard. You could go online and buy hundreds of key blanks for a given lock for ten, but three, four cents each. Uh, some keys are hard to obtain. The, this Medico that I have, these are the keys for it. And it comes with this card so that you can only duplicate the keys under um, you know, normal pretenses with the card because the card keeps track of you know, what's happened to them because they're patented, and that's all. All the other, most of the other keys on this table aren't. What? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 
very common. He's saying he, he can take do not duplicate keys. I have it stamped on him, get him duplicated. Yeah, just cover People are dumb, what can I say? <laughs> oh, blank for it. Well, that might as well just be just as worse for, um, for bumping, yeah. And then again, people say burglars need to know what lock it is beforehand. Uh, most locks you could look at the keyway once you get uh, acquainted with them and know what it is. Um, all of these master locks have the same keyway. All these, most of these slaves have the same keyway. Most of the have the same keyway um, because they're very, very standard. So the, the question of do I need 100,000 million keys for every type of keyway for 100% efficiency, there's two different keyways in all of those keys combined. That means I need two keys to bump them, every single one of them. Um, so that's, that's not true at all. And this isn't just a singular occurrence. This is every major, you know, lock distributor, <laughs> Home Depot, Osh, they all have a quick set key and a slage key. And I'll be damned if you're going to find other stuff without going to a locksmith. So how bumping works? Uh, bumping is actually very simple. And, and it's surprising that it wasn't discovered as soon as pin tumblers were made. I need all the bump keys, which you which sucking at being my assistant. Um, so bumping works like this Newton's cradle. Cradle. Everybody knew know what Newton's cradle is. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, how many balls you pull from one side, they'll clack against and push that many over. Simple transfer of energy. Um, and this is how pit guns work, with the, which have been a pretty popular locksmith tool for a number of years. Um, and so here's how it looks with pool balls. Everybody knows this. Everybody's played a game of pool in their life and done this, where the one ball doesn't move. Uh, and this is totally color coordinated. I, I, I really have my shit together for this talk. You, I mean, you're saying, I know, he looks so well composed and thought out. <laughs> so think of this as the red and the blue pins in the examples of all the, pick, the, the locks we've used before. So it'll hit that red pin, and the blue pin will move, but the red will stay the same. Um, and you could take the white to be your bump key. And this is how the pick gun works. It just slaps the bottom and pops all those up. And pick guns are kind of fallen by the wayside as far as lock picking because of bumping, uh, but they're still generally effective. Um, and if you'd like to pick one up, I, I'd recommend it. They're not too expensive, 10, 15 bucks. But <laughs> so there's some pictures of bump keys. And as you can see, all of these are high security locks, uh, including dimple locks. Um, but again, you need the dimple key cutter to make these. And here's our OSA lock that, I don't have this, the exact lock, but I could make a bump key if I wanted to right now, if somebody has a file. <laughs> and then Dom is a European company, Ava is a European company, all considered to be top of the line security wise. Uh, so how do you make a bump key? Uh, all you need is a key that'll fit the lock. And again, going back to our, how many keyways do you need? There are only two, two keyways on that, that, uh, that picture. So I would only need two keys for all of those locks. And that's pretty crazy, and it is. Um, so what you want to do is cut a 999 key. And 999 is locksmithing terms for the deepest pin depths that you can go. And in the example, you see they're all cut very low with the little ridges between them. And in the example, it shows how to do it. Cut these. I do all mine with hand files. So it's not, I mean, hand files are under a dollar. It's not expensive, going back to what you need. And it doesn't take long. You could also use a Dremel, um, as long as you, you don't have a shaky hand. Um, and you could use a professional key cutter, which I don't have access to, but a lot of people do. Uh, <laughs> in the case of Osh, Osh does have a professional key cutter and very willing to take your 125 to copy any key you have. So check them out, too. They're a great source of bump keys. Wait, so here is a quick set. Ah, it's too dark. Can you see that? I don't want to make it glare, but... And it just has... The pins, all the where the pins would rest, cut down to the lowest depth. And you could, if you you don't know how to do this, um, it might not you might not know what, like how low to go, because each each type of key has its own specification for what's low, what's high. Uh, you use a key gauge, which is essentially just this little thing, and all you have to do is slide. Uh, like I find a quick set. This is a quick set key. And I find it, and it goes all the way, all the way, all. Wow, I fail it. Yeah, that coordination. <laughs> goes all the way to the bottom. And so that's how I know it's at the, the lowest pin depth. Okay. So bumping, what you want to do is you, you made your bump key. This one. You made your bump key. You take it and you place it. 
I have a better one. No, I know. Okay, so you see, memorize this picture. Okay, ready? Okay, it's gone. <laughs> you take your bump key and you place it all the way into the lock, and traditional bumping would say that you pull the key out one pin and you'll feel it click. It's very simple, it might sound hard. Uh, all you do is go out one, and then what you want to do is hit it. And just like in our example, the pool ball is a pick gun, the energy is transferred, and once all those blue pins are up, you touch the key and it'll turn. You, you apply torque with your hands. Uh, and the key will rotate, lock will open. Very simple. Very not hard to do. I mean, I, I personally trained in a Shaolin temple for nine years to learn how to do this. Um, I learned to bump before I could walk, but you might have better luck with it uh, just out of the blue. So, so what do you hit it with? Um, anything, essentially, but in my hand. <laughs> Um, you want to hit it with a bump hammer, and you can hit it with anything technically, but um, in my experience, these really are amazingly well engineered to transfer energy, to get the right swing, to, to get it to work. Um, and this is brand new, fresh off the presses, KE Bump, um, and it's a, a production bump hammer, and it comes with the, the lock saver lubricant to make sure everything goes, goes well. A lot of you are familiar with lube, I'm sure. <laughs> use this kind of loot. Yeah, don't mix the two. So this is the bump hammer, and um, I'm very happy to show you guys this new bump hammer um, because I have the old one, and it was kind of, it felt very frail because it was not, it was made out of uh, PVC, uh, but this one's made out of plastic, and so I could go like this, and it's not going to break. Um, and as you can see, it's very, very swingy. It's got this weight on the end, and all you do is hit the key, and the lock will open. Easy as that. Sounds crazy. Whoa. I... I go home. <laughs> Where am I? Don't look. This will spoil everything. <laughs> Hit it. Bobby Gamer. Okay. Demonstration. All right. Um, I had a few drinks, so forgive me if this doesn't go off. I might hit myself a few times. Go to camera. Uh, okay. So we have, this is a standard quick set door knob. Um, everybody pull out their key. You could hide them from everybody else if you're paranoid. Pull out your keys. Seriously. Do it. <laughs> all right. Now, I want you to look on all your keys. On the tip of them, they'll say probably KW1 or SC1. Raise your hand if you have one of those. There's plenty more. You're just not pulling out your keys, you punks. I assure you that everybody in this room has or has lived in a, a, a building or work at a building that uses one of those or another bumpable key. But in the example picture I showed you from Home Depot, those are the two keys that everybody has everywhere, as far as all my experiences in California have been concerned. So a good number of you, right? So remember that when I open this lock with my nine years of training. So this is your doorknob, the protector of your servers, your personal goods, everything you own. Um, Remember, it costs $22 or whatever, too, so it's better, it's better pay off, right? So I'll go open. <laughs> and it, I, I actually forgot to verify that it was a locked thing, because some people are like, oh, he just hit the key that works with it. Uh, but it is, it doesn't work for this lock to open it normally. So... Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, who, who has never bumped a lock, never picked a lock? Well, okay, never bumped a lock. Ah. You? Come on. <laughs> okay. Just to show that my nine years of training was uh, wasted. The loans are a bitch. Uh. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. I mean, uh. What's your name? Lorraine. Lorraine. See, I would have never randomly made up that name. Okay. You've never, no lock experience whatsoever? I'm a little picky. Did you go through the four year or the nine year training for bumping? No. Okay. Okay. We're good. Um, so, uh, you want to switch seats with me? Sure. 
That way you can be on camera. Okay. She has prettier hands than data. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, shall you. see. So here's your bump key, Kay. right? Here's your lock. Pretend it's his front door. Whoever you don't like. Okay. Me. You take your bump <laughs> key and then just put it in. <laughs> and then pull it out one. You'll feel it click. Real light. Don't try and turn it. Just no. pull it. Is it suck? Did I break it? No, I know. There you go. Okay, so she pulled it out one, one pin depth. And now all you're going to do is you're going to take the bump hammer, okay. and you're going to hit it, and you're going to touch it to turn it right as you hit it. Um, okay? Okay. So I don't know which, what handed you are, but touch it right at the bottom. When you, no, no, hit it like <laughs> that. <laughs> Not on yeah, the side. You break the, the key. <laughs> don't want to do that. Okay. So. Yeah, you just want to right on the back of the key, not on the side. Hit, touch Directly it right as you hit it. Touch it right as you hit it. Uh, hard. Oh, I, I felt Here. it. Here. But sh when you do it, um, if you're not getting it, you'll also hear the pins fall back down when you let go. Because some will set, but not all. Hold stop. it from the bottom so you get the swing. Okay. And here. Here, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll turn it as you hit Kay. it. Ready? Ah. Wait, we forgot to pull it out that time. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Got the problem going. I know. <laughs> I, I will oblige that request. Okay, so what does that exactly mean? <laughs> she just asked me what the lube does. <laughs> All right. So you I prefer to lube up the key and then just take the key and slide it in so that it touches all the pins. Because <laughs> really... Have you been watching my porn again, Dave? <laughs> Because it's very rude to lube the key without, uh, lube the lock without letting it know. <laughs> okay, so you just take it, pull it out. You want to try? I, I'm, we're probably having a really bad thing because I'm touching it. Okay. I'm no good with my hands. Go ahead. You just touch it. Ah, like a, so you hear it? Mm -hmm. Almost getting it. Okay. No? Ah. Just no information? No. I think you're doing it a little too early. Kay. I'll tell you what. I, I'll give you a lock that I know you can bump, but you gotta wait five minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, so in, in all our normal examples we pulled out, um, and Lorraine unfortunately is not very good with the pull out method. Um, <laughs> How red am I? <laughs> but they improved upon this, makes it even easier against uh, some locks. What's funny is that against better locks, it's actually more effective because the engineering is such that. The, the pins in the chambers don't rattle around, they don't move around. They're engineered very well, but that makes them easier to bump because the transfer of energy is much cleaner. Um, so we have minimal movement bumping. And so normally, you, it's like this, the key, and you can't push it in anymore. So what you, oh, I should probably do this. <laughs> what you do is you shave off those two points, the tip and the shoulder. This piece over here is called the shoulder. Oh, okay. <laughs> thought we were done. <laughs> you just shave off those and what you could do now is that you could push the lock in a little bit more. Um, so and so I have a minimal movement key and I know she'll be able to bump this because this doesn't require the coordination between hitting and touching. I'm, a <laughs> I'm saying it's easier. That's what I'm saying. Um, you'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And so all you do is hit it, same thing, boom. <laughs> As I storm into your data center to steal all your servers. <laughs> so with this method, all she has to do is take it, and I put it in the lock for her, which is not cheating or coercion or collusion <laughs> in any way. But, and so you can see you could push this in just a little bit, and it'll give that, that spring to it. So all you have to do is touch it right here, hit it until it turns. Okay. You'll, you'll feel it, definitely. Keep hitting it. A little harder. Oh. <laughs> Watch out for your fingers. You sure it's not open? Ah, yeah. There we go.
Um, okay, so this has been limited, limited to... Motherfucker, this key's about to break. <laughs> that key's about to break, which we'll go into in a second. <laughs> this has been limited to two... Uh, two locks, so are, are, am I just fucking around? We'll take our key from our first example, the non-minimal movement, and we will move it to... I don't even know if I have another... Yeah. Move it to... Which one? No, that has no pins in it. <laughs> Is that the one from my front door? It may have been from your front door <laughs> at one point. We won't get into that. So we'll just take it... Lock might be broken for for all I know. Ah. How much longer do you think it'll take? Uh, give me ten minutes. Okay. We're just gonna run through a bunch of slides because they they're short on time. Okay. So interesting things that happen when you're when you're bumping locks. Um, they said you need to be very precise when you cut the keys. You need to do all this stuff. You need to cut it, you know, exact. You need to have the right keys. Um, I've already hopefully shown you the light on some of those. Um, as far as cutting the keys right, the keys self-adjust themselves the more you bump them. The more this, the keys made out of very soft material so that it can be easily cut. Uh, the lock's not. The pins in the lock are not because they don't want you to just be able to hammer them and break the lock. Um, the bump keys self-adjust to the pins. And as in the example, you see the dent right here from repeated bumping, and that'll align the bump key properly so that it becomes easier to bump. Um, and again, also right here, you can't see it very well, but it's kind of flattened the, the shoulder of the, the lock so that it could go in just a little bit more than it needs to. Um, so that's an interesting thing. So you don't need to make them exact. Um, some of my keys are really f gnarly looking. Um, either they've been hit so many times, I just suck at filing. Um, but suck at filing. But uh, it, it's not hard, and it doesn't require any sort of precision other than getting them low enough in the first place to actually b bump them. Um, too much force. <laughs> <laughs> and what I noticed last night while I was working with the new hammer is that one of my master lock uh, bump keys is starting to snap. Uh, that, that's M's doing right there, actually. I was like, dude, stop hitting it! <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so don't, you don't need very much force. Uh, if anybody does martial arts, you'll know that uh, for knockout stuff, all you want to do is punch and release as fast as possible so that the f energy transfer doesn't come back to your hand. Yeah, that's right. I dropped the physics. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's very little, like not, you know, feather taps, but hit it hard enough, but not hard enough that you're, you're hurting the bump hammer or whatever you're hitting with and the lock and the key. Um, so, hitting it too hard causes bumping to be noticeable. Um, deformations can occur, and it's caused by the shoulder, as um, one of you are asking. Um, caused by the shoulder, it'll hit against the face of the lock, and it'll cause damage. Um, there's this, and it's called the glue gun shoulder. Um, and there's a picture of one of my locks that's been beat the hell out of. <laughs> um, you can see, not only is there damage right here, but there's also damage here because people didn't file off the bottom as well. Of course, symmetrical is where it's at. Um, some people don't know this, apparently. Um, but that lock is still bumpable. <laughs> a little noticeable. Um, so now I'm sure you're all going to run to your house and work and look for, you know, dents right there, which may occur from normal usage. Oh, every time you want to open the door. <laughs> when, when you go for the porn collection, you just really... <laughs> um, so glue gun shoulders. All you do is take a... Uh, everybody know what a glue gun is? It's glue that gets hot, or it's a glue stick that gets hot and turns into glue. It's, it's, it's in a gun, and it, it shoots out. It's phenomenal. All you do is cut it in half and melt it so that it, it acts as the shoulder of your lock, and you'll bump, and it'll hit that. The glue gun shoulder, and the glue gun shoulder is not going to hurt the lock because it's very soft material. Um, it'll also <laughs> allow the lock to go in a little bit more because it gives, um, and it won't damage the key, won't damage the lock. Um, very, very efficient way of mitigating damage through bumping, keeping it more anonymous. Should bumping scare you? Yeah. Do I really need to get into the rest? Easy to find keys, easy to do. I have like five locks on this table that actually protect against bumping. If you go out and just go out in the street, start looking at locks, 
Um, most of them won't protect at all. They'll protect against picking, uh, but not bumping. And that makes it a huge threat when all the locks people can buy at Home Depot, and as well as the fact that people just buy the cheapest lock, the fact that all of those are not bump resistant and easily open in seconds creates a huge security problem. And it's not like the software world where they can just patch it because now there's hundreds of thousands of millions of locks in circulation that just get rocked easily. Uh, there's also problems with insurance. If your insurance company can blame you, they have no, no burglary protection. Like I, I go and I bump your door lock and I steal all your shit. How are they going to know that you just weren't negligent and left the door open, left the door unlocked, um, whatever? Yes, sir? Yeah, so that was my advice. I, I don't advocate burglary, but if you're going to burglarize stuff, make sure you break shit so that the people get off at least. That's just common courtesy. <laughs> yeah. But a, a lot of people get f confused when I do talks. I don't advocate this stuff. I do this stuff for fun, and so should you. Um, and if you're criminals, I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not responsible for any of your actions. Uh, defending against bumping. Uh, I'm going to have to run through this real quick because I told them 10 minutes, 10 minutes ago, and I feel like an asshole. But it is the last talk. Oh, we're not doing too bad. Uh, dinner? Hey, steak. Um, so there's three things. In oh. I went limp. <laughs> it's not excited about this talking. <laughs> Fuck, even the microphone's getting sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Um, so there's three things that pretty much uh, defend against bumping in general. The sidebars, when implemented correctly, um, with the case of the OSA V10, all you need is that same sidebar. You just buy the lock that has the same sidebar, and you file down the rest of the key, and bam, the sidebar works as designed, and all the pins, the rest of the pins, the normal pins, are bumped, and the lock's open. Uh, and this was a huge problem for OSA because they'd been seen as this, you know, rrr, impenetrable company up until then. Uh, there's also trap pins, which are these pins on the side. And what happens is you have the key, and it works like this. So when you pass over that trap pin space, the, the top, the boat, lot of, bleh, the lower pin is held up by the key, so nothing's falling into the, into the keyway. Um, but when you bump or pick it, it'll fall in. What's the problem with that? Lock's fucked. You have to drill the lock to get that out. There's, there's no, no known way to get that out. Um, so obviously we don't want to go around having to replace every single lock whenever it gets bumped or picked or otherwise screwed up. Um, so that's not a, exactly the most elegant solution. Uh, the elegant solution is shadow drilling. In a normal lock, the chambers are all drilled down to the same depth. But what if we did that? Now your bump key cut to the lowest depths will not touch that one. Um, and assuming they don't do something stupid like the sidebar and make it so that that same chamber is drilled to that same depth for every kind of lock like that, as long as they randomize it, um, it'll be a very effective way of, of defending against bumping. And in some cases, it defends against because that other pin will be so high up that it might be hard to get to um, with a pick. But that's the general reason for this is to deter bumping. And I think at present, only a few European companies do this. No, um, no American companies do this for, for the minimal cost that it'd take. I mean, even these master locks, for the minimal cost to put security pins, they don't do it because over, you know, that one penny per lock over millions of locks is a lot of money to them. They don't want to do that. And you what do they care if your house gets busted into? So shadow drilling, that's an example. Your bump key's not touching that lower one, so you're not going to be able to open that lock. And it's a very good solution. So legal issues. People say, is it legal to own a lock set? Depending on where you live, yes. In California, you can buy all the lock crap you want. Uh, a lot of the lock people are trying to get bump keys um, made illegal. And that's logical, because there's no practical reason for a bump key. It's not like key, like you just get a copy of the key, um, so that might go into effect, uh, you know, depending on what happens in the next few months, year, two years, uh, but it has been coming into the media's eye a lot with um, uh, my talk, uh, Mark Tobias's talk at DEF CON, uh, again, this talk, I, I'm sure I'll get a few emails again, um, so it's legal to purchase as, as far as California is concerned, and it's legal to own, um, if you're out behind the 7-Eleven trying to bump the lock and a cop comes up, let you off the hook. That's going to be bad, and they're going to—they're uh, going to know 
one way or another, you're trying to force entry into there. Um, so intent is the big thing. As long as you're, you're not, you know, intending to break into things and you're just doing it in the privacy of your own home for, you, you know, hobby purposes, it, it's not going to be a big problem. And if you live in a state where possession of locked tools is a problem, if you qualify for one of these five things, you will generally be eligible to own them. Um, and some of you might be some of these things. Um, generally, um, you can still buy them online. I'm not saying, you know, break your laws. I mean, break your laws if you need to. It's not my business. Um, but you should, you should look at your own state uh, laws or country laws, wherever you guys are from, and check it out. Most states, I think, allow it. Um, sometimes they're considered burglary tools, but you still would need to show intent. Like I own a crowbar, I own a hammer. That doesn't mean I go ripping off banks every day, you know. Um, and they can't, they can't really outlaw keys, because then the locks <laughs> So, uh, so affordable security. Uh, the medical biaxial I showed you, um, for the prices you're paying for this lock, you could probably buy two of these locks on eBay. And I bought mine on eBay for about uh, $12 with the key card and the keys. So, I mean, I could replace my front door lock and feel infinitely more secure and be infinitely more secure. There's also the uh, best interchangeable cores. Um, they make it so you could take out the core and put in a different padlock if you wanted to. Uh, they're a good lock, not bump resistant, but very hard to pick and considered pretty good. Um, the ASA, keep in mind the V10 still has the bumping problem, but it's still a very good lock otherwise. Uh, and the twin are what I have, which are essentially the same thing, but without the sidebar problems, key problems. Um, and then there's Avis disc locks, which I couldn't get into because I don't have time. I mean, I've gone over by half an hour already. And then American Sergeant. Um, bad locks, master and quick set. There's very, very few master and quick sets that are worth buying for the amount of money you're paying and the amount of security they're going to offer you. Um, and this will be up later, so you don't need to you know, feel rushed to write all this down. Buying picks and tools. Uh, online is pretty much the best place to do it, or at conferences. Um, these are the two sites that I'd recommend, lockpickshop.com. Lots of great stuff. Lockpicks.com. Uh, Lockpicks.com actually sells a lot of other stuff that they don't, that Lockpick Shop doesn't, like key blanks, key cutters. Um, I think they both sell bumping tools at this point, but you should be buying bumping tools from KE Bump. Um, I own quite a few bumping hammers scattered around the table, um, and the new KE Bump is without a doubt, like, single-handedly the best bumping hammer I've ever touched. Um, and right now, I, I, I know the guy who makes these, and he says, uh, you go to this site, and he'll have it um, on sale. These actually aren't for sale yet. Um, he's working on it. And it's $20 for this and 25 with lubricant. He's actually losing money putting the lube in, but it's, it's really awesome to have um, for picking, for bumping. And it's a pretty good lube made specifically for locks. Um, so I'd recommend picking up one of these if you're interested. Um, so go to that site, uh, and he'll have a special order page. I think it goes through PayPal. Um, he's changing web servers right now. Um, so it should be up, as far as I know, right now. Um, and again, the KE bump, very awesome. Well, hey. <laughs> Obviously, like nine Medico by X. Quick actually, set. Actually, you want to know what I have? I have, <laughs> I have a Kaba, a Kaba Penta. But we won't get into that. Sure. Obvious. I have a nine-inch steel plating on my, my apartment door. I have to like, give a DNA sample every time I visit him. <laughs> I, I left the outer side so that the, the landlords don't get mad, but it's actually like this. <laughs> like when they knock, it goes, kukum, kukum. <laughs> um, so buying locks. Locks can be expensive if you're going out and buying from hardware stores. Like I said, $30 lock. You could buy a lot of locks, like a literal lot as in a box. Um, eBay sells a lot of stuff like that, that they're used, but you get them for cheap. You could also go on Craigslist say, hey, in my area, I want to offer, you know, a dollar, two dollars per lock, which is a really good price. Um, but, you know, depending on what locks they give you. Um, and people, you won't afford all the locks that people will offer you. It's that, like, people don't want old locks. Why would they? Um, you could also go to local locksmiths say, hey, I'm, I'm an apprentice kind of lock, lock person. And ask friends. I have a lot of friends who, once I started doing this, a lot of these are donated by them because they were like, hey, I had this, you know, in my basement. Here, take it. What am I going to do with it? Um, and you can also specify you don't need the keys. That makes acquiring them a lot easier because people maybe lost the keys. Now they have no reason to use it. Um, and here's a lot of links. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to skip through this because, but mainly you should check out Lockpicking 101. It's a shirt. Um, Tool.nl. They're based, actually, I think they're 
they're international now, but they're a big, big lock group. Um, some of the best lock pickers in the world are on there. Um, they pretty much, they, they are who I learned bumping from and most of the picking technique that I know. Uh, you should also check out, again, locks, lockpickshop.com. KEBump is actually uh, enterthecore.net, um, but I, I forgot to update it. And there's all these other sites. Mark Tobias spoke at DEF CON. Uh, Barry Wells is one of the prominent members of Tool. He gives a lot of talks on this sort of stuff. Um, so thanks for the pictures. Um, the Magnus Bjorkbaum, uh, he did the illustration that's in the, the title slide. Um, Steve W. gave me the dimple pick images, lock pick shop, KE bump. There, see, I got the, I got the right link there. <laughs> um, well, so no thanks for me for taking all the photos. Nah. <laughs> Strom took some of the photos too, but eh. Uh, questions real quick? <laughs> Real quick before you go, the, do you want the address of the party? Or were they filming gay porn or something? Um, 906 10th Avenue, number 101. Again, 906 10th Avenue, number 101, San Diego, California, 92101. At 930 in the intersection.